Well, it's Monday morning, and we got down here finally, down here to the main shop in McDowell. We've been stuck in Klamath working on trucks for quite a while. Yeah, I've been down here last week off and on doing service calls. Had a six liter power stroke that we put injectors in it two years ago, and usually those Ford after what well, Ford reman injectors are pretty pretty good. I haven't hardly had any trouble with it, but he it was just kind of a weird coincidence, I guess. I don't know. He put a fuel tank sending unit in it because his sender went bad. I mean, the day that he put the sender in it, he said it started misfiring. Anyways, I had I had come out and looked at it. Oh, a couple days before that, when he when his sending unit went bad and it had some pro it had some code in it that said force limit power and it was cutting out on throttle. You know, you'd hit the throttle and it just cut out on you. And it was force limit power was the code on it for fuel level low. I said, well, it sounds like to me you need to fuel, fix your fuel tank. I said, here's what we'll do if you just want to drive it around for a couple of days so you got your pickup, we'll just unplug it. That way it won't take it into force limit power. And you'll just have to make sure you got fuel in it. So anyways, he put a sending unit in it and then it and then it uh, started misfiring. And anyways, I went out there and had a contribution code for number six and I just listened to it when I was cranking on it. I uh, took the Fickham fuse out and just cranked on it and it had a nice even crank and I said, well, it's, it's got to be an injector. It has a nice even cranking sound, so I don't think it's anything related to a mechanical issue as far as a valve or a cylinder. So we put an injector in it the other day, and now it runs smooth again. But uh, I've got a bunch of stuff on some other ranches i got to do. Our wonderful Kubota M135GX, the one we put the engine in, now it won't move in forward. It only moves in reverse. So now I'm wondering if we screwed up and we should have went ahead and rebuilt the shuttle transmission while we had it and split in half, you know. Those things are such junk tractors, you know. Over 4,000 hours on it, now it's going to have to have a, the transmission rebuilt in it too. Anyway, here's a 2950. This is a good tractor. Um, I was a little mistaken from what the guy was telling me. I thought he said it was a 55 series. Uh, but it's not, it's a 50. Um, this one just has a synchronized range transmission in it. It's got a, it's got a four speed, you know, you got four there, then you got, uh, actually a, a high and a low range transmission. One, two, three, four, you got low range and reverse, and then you got high range which I can feel it. Higher range is totally different feeling. So, yeah, something ain't right there. Let's see with this thing. I've had it on there. It's probably not. I might have to get my jumper cables in my truck. He said he had an alternator problem, and don't worry about that. He'd change the alternator. Let's see here. I'm probably going to need two hands. Some of these old tractors, you had to mess around with the neutral safety to get them to start. Well, and this thing is so... Oh, she goes, there she goes, there she goes. Fire in the hole. Okay. Let's see what we got here. So let's just put it in first. That's going to be reverse, I'm pretty certain. Yeah. That's going to be low. Okay, and this should be high. And there's absolutely nothing there. Let's try it in second. Let's try it in third. Okay. There's low. Alright, so she's got... Nothing there. Absolutely nothing. Doesn't even labor really. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Okay. And I know I know these old tractors pretty well, guys, so I, I know which shaft does what because I've been down this road many times with the old 30 
3155s, 2955s. This is a 2950s. Back here is all the same anyway. So this is going to be the high. Okay. This shaft up here on top is going to be range 1 and range 2. And this outside shaft is range is range 2. The inside shaft is range 1 and reverse. Let's look at it. Okay. Here is Well, that's all it's all turning. I wonder if we can just pull. I gotta go look at the breakdown of it. Yeah. Something inside. There's set screws that hold those forks onto the collars on the shift shafts. The set screws come out of that. Or the forks broke or something like that. Let's go look at the breakdown in the book. I got a book open in here. Let's look at it. Hey, Daze. Hi, babe. How are ya? Okay. Well, let's look at this. Here is a transmission shift linkage exploded view. Okay, so I know the top shaft is our range. So 13 should be the first and reverse. Shifter shaft range one and reverse range, okay. And as you can see here, here's number seven. Number seven is going to be shifter shaft range two. Number seven. They're not really telling you how that's connected. I don't remember how that's connected to there. Let's see what's the little? Sh I think it's the little shaft right here. Yeah, it's the little shaft where it comes through here. So that little shaft goes through the bigger shaft inside of it and then it comes through here comes all the way over here to 30 which I think 30 is just going to be shift lever but then I think 30 turns this shaft which turns pulls this fork back and forth number 22 yep shifter fork range 2 so I've seen the set screws and the forks come loose and then the shift shaft just goes back and forth inside the, the collar of the fork and not do anything. I've seen the forks break from people jamming them in gear. And I said there's another set of set screws on this end too down here. So there's a lot of things that can go on here. Or this little shaft is broke. And from my experience see you can't get this shaft all this has to be you can't just pull this housing off of here with all this on here none of this stuff comes out of here you have to pull the top of the transmission off before you can do anything I mean you gotta take it loose in here or something to get this off you can't just pull this off from my experience anyway so, looks like we need to get her in low range, get her in the shop. Probably going to wind up pulling the cab off the top of it, and we might be able to just, we'll see what we got. Probably going to have to split it.
somewhere. Take the cab. I guess I'll cross that bridge here in a little bit. Um, start pulling linkage off. I can probably go ahead and just let that hitch down. Can I reach it from over here? I got this window open. That way I don't have to climb up in there. But I'm not going to be able to reach it from there. How about this? Gonna have to climb up in there, which wouldn't be too big of a deal if there was a step. But I probably would have already had her taken off anyway. Hitch down on it. This is all mechanical. It should go down. That was terribly unsafe the way I dismounted that piece of equipment. <laughs> oh, I can't help it. Some sniveling crybaby got on there, and and you should have heard his little post about how unsafe it was when I dismounted that lower do you have your 5000-23 it was terribly unsafe and not only unsafe was it it was illegal the way you dismounted that piece of equipment out there I wish you would consider safety <laughs> ah, ah. hey you just can't make a shit up we're gonna unhook all this linkage I'll have to get in there and take that one Bolt. There must be a nut on the other side of it, or it's stripped and it's just spinning in there, which is definitely a possibility because the other one was threaded. Well, yeah. All right, we'll just basically take all these, all this linkage loose. All right, this one here. How's it coming off? different situation. Alright. Okay, this one here. Running down here to the rock shaft. How's that one there come off? There must be a clip in that somewhere. Yeah, I'll have to look at that a little. And then this this is probably going to the seat or something here. What's that? I don't know. Pull that off of there. Take that hose loose. Take the, uh, this looks like PTO or something. No, that's not PTO. I think this is, I think that's PTO. I think that's park brake there or something. I don't remember. Pull that off. Throw that clip in the magnetic parts tray here. What's it gonna take to get this one rod off right here? What do we got here? Sometimes you can just take the... <sighs> take that loose. Yeah, that's the way to do it. We'll just take it loose right there. It's kind of, here's the valve block for it, for the remotes and everything. Then all the shift rods here. Might as well pop all those loose. Ah, we're I'm trying to remember how that one comes off of there. It's got a C-clip, I think, on it. i got to get a rag clip. Yeah, it's got a C-clip on it, or E-clip, or whatever the hell you call it on there all right and then here's the throttle linkage that that rod there will have to come loose right up there this rod will have to come loose here brake lines going back will have to be undone um okay cab mount Throttle linkage, if I remember, it's nice. There's a C clip right here. You can pop off. 
but then you almost got to take a zip tie and tie the rod up to the brake line that way it's not sagging and hanging up on everything when you're pulling it alrighty somebody's already popped this one rod down here loose and never put the you can see it somebody never put it back you know where it needed to be so I gotta get this one here off I got to rag clean that off there's a c-clip on the other side on the uh, uh, range one shift lever and then this is this is all this is all uh, valve block type stuff okay we're getting there we're getting... it won't take long we'll have this off of here and we'll be pulling separating it in two Oh, sit down right there, maybe. Pull these steering lines off. Something like that, maybe. Just a touch bigger. Let's go with that right there. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. Drippy, drippy. Same size as I used on the last one. This one's got a bigger hole in it. She sure as hell does. You know what I'm gonna do though? I don't like doing that. I like them protruding like that because you know what I'll do? I won't see it and I'll put the dirty bastard back on here. And then I'll figure out well, why I come I got no steering? What the hell's going on here? And I'll chase it and chase it, and then I'll find out that I left the plug in there. So I'm going to get a bigger one that protrudes. Something like this, maybe? That way I can see it? Shh. Yeah, that's a little better. It's sticking out there a ways. Alright.
these 50 series and 55 series. Is, when we see stuff like this, you'll see den fittings on them. They have a lot of European elements to them, Mannheim. Somebody's dog up here on the hill, raising hill. And these are mice cup. I shut the hell up. Oh. I got. Hopefully, my injectors show up today for the. Uh, the New Holland 1095 that I've got torn apart over in Medford. <sighs> okay. What size hole does this one got in it? Okay. Right, maybe none of that one there. What's this hose? We gotta take the dash plug out. Alrighty. I should just unplug like like a so. And then somebody's got a manual gauge of some sort hooked up into the block. We gotta take that loose. And then there's a war. As they say down there in Texas, they got a war right here. I'm not making fun of you. I just I'm, I was originally born in Texas. I lived in Texas till I was 13, 14 years old. So remember when I was a kid there, they said a tar. We got a tar off old bird. Get your tar. What? Okay, so that's gonna be like a tack cable or something there. And then we got a somebody's put a mechanical gauge or something in here. So we got to take that loose rot jar, rot tar. Mm -hmm. uh, I got that Case MX240. Something I just kind of noticed here. It looks like they got like a front hub seal. Oh, it must be that steering cylinder or something leaking on it. I don't know. No, probably got no oil in the hub. <laughs> well, pull the floor plate out and unplug the harness here. I did the PTO control linkage, got it zip tied to the brake line so it'll come with the cab and not sag down, especially when I'm going back together and you don't pogo it and bend it. Uh, they put a mechanical heat gauge in her and that kind of throws a snag in my plans. Because I didn't really want to drain the antifreeze. I had it all planned out. I had those fancy pliers that, uh, golly, Chat Regzel sent me and I put them on each heater hose and then I went back here and I pulled the heater hose off and put a plug in each one and then I drug the hoses clear out of it and laid them down. It worked out pretty good. You know, I really thought I was cutting a fat hog there and then, then I come over here and they got a mechanical heat gauge in it and so I got to drain the water anyway. Son of a gun. So much for me thinking. Sometimes me and thinking don't work out too good. This supports it supports the shafts right here. Uh, let's see here. A couple of three eighths bolts in that. Yeah. Well, let's see what else Warren forgot.
AC lines. I got them off, but there's a bracket that's got it attached to the bottom of the cab, so we gotta, gotta get that loose. problem. Get off of there. Now those are loose from, well they're really not even on the cab, but they're on the support, which probably wouldn't have yeah, shoot, I probably didn't have to do that. Now I see they're, yeah, they're bolted to the support, which stays there. So, well, anyway, didn't have to take that off. Well, for some reason, my brain was thinking it was attached to the cab, and it's not. Hey, one of my plugs fell out. So, my thought here, Try to lift it up because I got a lot of slack here in this. And once I get it up a ways, I can get back in here a little easier to get this loose. And I'm just gonna stick a plug in it like I have everything else. Okay, so let's make sure stuff's not attached to the cab somewhere. Those wires should come with it. That linkage will stay there. These wires here. Stay right there. Now, this rod here for the park brake, you gotta kinda have to, once you get it up in the air a little bit, you kinda have to work it sideways and get it around this. Like so. Nothing holding us up back here. Now this whole thing, I'm gonna lay it in the cab here. This valve block. See if we can throw it in the cab. Just take it up with the cab. I don't see anything attached here. All the linkage is free. These heater hoses should clear there. It looks like we got everything. They put. Hopefully it does.
shut the fuck off for a second. So, we got everything free. Um, now I can get back into where this mechanical heat gauge is a lot easier. Probably not much fun for you. It'll just lift on that and clear that. And that'll stay there. Uh, let's see, and there's a couple threaded holes in there that we can put our lifts and eyes in there and a couple bolts in it, but we gotta get I'm trying to remember how I went about doing this. Uh, there's a bolt there for that remote block, and I think it comes over to this one here. That leak off hose is right smack in the way. Five four one four oh seven fourteen thirty nine. I don't know who that is. Uh we can go ahead at least get these bolts out of here. dig the grease out of there my socket won't go on it and it might be because I might have to get a chrome socket and quite a bit of grease packed down in there Get a chrome socket on that one. It should be. Where, oh, where? Who goes for your driver at? And there should be some bolts buried in the grease here. Remember, right? I'll have to take this all out there once we get her off of there and we'll pressure wash it too. I washed all this this morning as far up as I could and got around it. That's as far as I could go. Grease around. Should be one down in here somewhere. Yep. Right there. And that's probably going to take a chrome socket too. Should be one right here. Yeah, might as well go get the chrome one because. None of these are going to come out with that impact socket, I can tell you that right now. Uh, I don't think there was one. There's one down in there. And I think... One right here. Another one right here. Let me get the rest of these bolts out. I'll be back with you. There's the crane controller. There it
see what we see in here. Alright, here's all our shift forks. Our problem child is this one. is moving oh oh I see the fork somehow the fork is on the wrong side what the hell happened there somehow the fork is not on the collar or the fork is worn out and it slid over the collar I wonder if I can, man, I could cut a fat hog if I could, I wonder if I can get that far enough back. That fork's probably not going to slide far enough ahead, huh? That'd be really nice if I could slide that fork right off the end of that shaft. And not have to split this thing over here, see, between the clutch housing and the transmission to pull that shaft clear through. That would be really, really sweet. But I bet it's going to come out here and it's going to hit and I'm going to be pissed off. Is there any other way that I could do that? See, I'm up against, I can't, I'm up against the stop there. Can't go any further. Two fingers. And see the shaft sticking way out here. Where's the where's the other fork at? So that's running. So that other one's up in there somewhere doing its thing. If I go back that way. Well, uh, we know what the problem is. The fork, it looks like to me the fork it's either broke or it just wore to where the ears are sliding right over the top of the clutch collar. Alright, well, I know where I'm going now. Let's get this off of here. We need to get a new gasket and a new seal for that. New rock shaft. Gasket and seal. Man, let's see. I was really hoping. I'm going to try anyway. Shoot, I'm going to try. Let's pull them Allen's loose. Let's see if we can slide that fork ahead. Uh, you know what? Ain't no sense in doing that, guys, because you got to put the new one on there. So the new the new fork is going to have to slide over the collar, and then the shaft go through it. So I mean, it's never gonna. You you, you might as well split it in two, and pull this shaft ahead, and pull it out of here. 
and put a new fork on it and then slide it back in because you're going to have to slide the new fork on the collar and you'll never get you'll never get it back far enough well at least we see what's wrong with it now i'm going to get on the phone actually right now and get a uh, rock shaft housing gasket this seal here and i'm going to get a fork coming and then i'm going to get a clutch housing gasket right here coming for it so might as well get that coming and i see you need to get this one off these two rails right here and then i don't see anything else that would keep us from doing what we need to do but that'll definitely hold you up there so i already called and i didn't order those so i'm gonna call and order those gaskets for that shift cover all right so where are we at here Bucket. I was like, what is that? The screen fell off and hit the bucket. Well, we'll take care of that. I'm glad I had a bucket right there to catch that oil. Shouldn't be. How's all that looking there? What do we do here? At least now I can get my shafts out of there. Those are bigger, so there's two Allen set screws. I'm trying to remember. I don't remember to be honest with you. This is the one we're after here. that PTO drum and all that stuff look. We'll see the, another drain pan under that edge. That's the thing about splitting tractors. It's a messy affair. Where's my magnetic parts tray at? This is something I definitely use Loctite on. When I go back together, I Loctite those set screws back in there. I don't like them coming loose. Okay, it's a different one.
Think that. Think that. Six millimeter, huh? Yeah, six millimeter. Kinda, but not near as much. Let's just put that there like that. Alright. Should be detents and all that kind of stuff on there too though. I don't remember where in the hell. I think they're in these holes back here. Just kind of guides it. So yeah. yeah. I almost got her. <clears throat> All right. Okay. There's our problem. Forks all worn out. It's updated to a new part number, so hopefully they made it better. Just worn out. It's all worn out. Yeah. Part number was facing this direction. It went like that. Offset side of the collar here goes towards the back. We'll just kind of sit her in there like that and ain't going nowhere. How about this collar down in here? Let me get a bar and stick it in gear and see if it does what it's supposed to do. Oh, I think it's going the wrong way. You are in higher range. We need to stick the. You need to be in first or second, though. One of the two. So, yeah, it's locking in. Just got a worn out clutch fork on it. There's high range. No, that won't do nothing because our range is in neutral. Alright, well. I'm gonna get a flashlight look down in there a little better just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Where oh where? I had that headlamp. I don't know what the hell I did with it. There it is. We'll use it as a flashlight. And I'll just guess I'll bounce right over here and I think that thing it's not head gaskets. I think it's got an injector cuff that's cracked. Is there anything laying in the bottom? Not that I can tell. Yeah, just a worn out clutch fork. These other clutch forks, they look pretty good. I don't see anything really that would tell me that there's a Really, the rear end, the ring and pinion looks good. From what I can see, the gear train back there, that all looks good. Back in here, 
There's our PTO clutch pack right there. I might call him and ask him if he just wants me to pull it out. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. See what he says. I don't know. 